weather anymore. I am so shocked. No, I am no longer doing the weather. What, they didn't like you guys' voices or what? I, I don't make I don't make the call. Okay, well, I did hear there is a chance of rain, so I'm really, really looking forward to that. And I'm sure your lawn as well as my lawn would really love a little bit of rain. It is, it is dry, 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 dry out there. Um, please, no fires right now. Um, it it is uh, it is way too dry. Things will things will just catch fire way too quickly right now. Um, I hope everyone's uh, keeping their gardens watered, keeping their lawn watered. Um, your lawn can go about three to four weeks without water. It does go dormant, and that's why it kind of looks brown right now. Once we get rain, the crown, depending on how much water we get, the crown of the plant needs a little bit of rain every three weeks, and that will keep the crown alive so it won't die completely. And then once we start getting good rains again, then it will come back. Um, so make sure if we don't get rain this weekend, you need to get out there. If you haven't been watering your lawn, get out there and water your lawn just so you keep it alive so it doesn't completely die. So, you know, we're, pr we're all praying for rain tomorrow because my garden would love that. My flowers would really love it. And I planted some perennials that... My goodness, I have to be out there twice a day watering it. And it's not that warm out. Um, so I don't even want to know if it gets back to 80 again for, you know, like a normal time. I'm not going to be able to keep up with it. So um, we're all praying for that rain. So join in with us for rain for for a couple of days. A good long day long rain would be lovely. So that's what I'm aiming for. My joints are starting to feel a little bit wonky, so the rain might be coming. I don't know. Um, I can't tell you that they're really bad yet, so I don't. I think it's more than 12 hours away, but um, it's starting. We we might get there. Um, I was want to talk about um, the. Um, uh, MSU Extension, they're doing a Wild About Conservation um, series. Um, this week, it is June 13. Um, it is Wild About Bumblebees, and they're going to talk about bumblebee conservation in Michigan. Um, I think that might be kind of exciting. They, um, they're, they're going twice a month at 1 p.m. on June 13 and then on June 27 they're going to talk about soils um, and agriculture that should be interesting too everyone's got different soils here um, and they're going to talk about forests and landscaping bird conservation uh, leaves on the ground for birds in the air I'm not quite sure what that is about and um, planning and planting a native plant pollinator garden. Um, all of these things uh, kind of sound fun. It's only an hour long. Um, it's twice a month for an hour. Um, you have to sign in. It doesn't cost anything, but you have to go to MSU Extension and look at events and sign in so they can give you the super secret password to get onto their their site so you can get onto their seminar. It It is, um, you if even if you passed it, um, you can still go on and listen to a, a past um, program. So I think it'd be kind of fun. Um, they just kind of come up with this. I'm not quite sure why. Obviously, people had an interest in it. So the bumblebee thing ought to be really interesting. Um, the bumblebees—they're not quite sure exactly where they where they go. Well, they know that all the males die, and only the queens survive over the winter. But where they go, they're not quite sure. So they're not quite sure if they're in the ground or just in leaf litter or where they are. They're trying to do some work on it. So that might be kind of a an interesting um, interesting thing. Um, now at DeBrines, it's busy doing... People are still planting their gardens um, and they're replanting their gardens from things that they planted too early and never came up. So they're replanting now. You still have plenty of time to put in most crops, um, like celery and leeks, you're probably too late, but most crops, uh, cucumbers, uh, 
squashes, pumpkins. Pumpkins are usually planted in mid-June. Um, all the serious pumpkin growers are now getting their orders together at DeBrine. So um, they plant it this time of year. So you're not too late on the pumpkins because uh, you certainly didn't want to plant them earlier than this. Otherwise, it's you get them too early in the fall. Um, but yes, it, we've still got time for all of that sort of stuff. So people are doing that. But we still have tomato plants and pepper plants for those of you that you know, need to fill in a little thing here and there. I'm bringing some plants home tonight. I've got some empty spots, so I thought I would do that. I really wanted to do shallots. I've never done those before, so I put some of those in the other night. Um, I just, I like to try something different every year. I have no idea what they're going to turn out to be, but it might be kind of fun. Um, and then also there's, um, well, there's there are squash plants and zucchini especially. Everybody seems to want one zucchini plant. So, yes, we do have that. Um, we've got some herb plants. Um, the basil is gone, but we still have, oh, my goodness, some beautiful oregano and some of the other ones, some mints, that they are looking beautiful. We have got some gorgeous flower flats. Oh, my goodness. Um the stocks are so pretty, and I think they smell so sweet. i got to bring some of those home tonight, too. We still have some seed potatoes left. We do have um, red norlands left of the red potatoes. I know we have some russet norcotas of the russets. Um, we have Kennebec yet in white, and we have some Yukon gold left. Um, so we do have some of every color, so you don't have to worry about it. We do have them left. Um, they're sprouting so hey put them in the ground with the sprouts on don't take them off because otherwise the potatoes spent all that energy sprouting you don't want to take it off and make it start all over again so you plant it as is in the ground it will it will catch up with all the potatoes that other people have planted so you don't have to worry about that so if you wanted to do some potatoes this is the time to get them in the ground too we do have some onion sets left so if you want to do some onions or some uh, green onions, um, that's what um, onion sets are for, or, the, or they make a uh, a storage onion, not a huge sweet one, but just a regular, a regular white, or I think we have white ones left, and I'm, we might have some red ones left. I'm not quite sure, but I know we have white. So yes, we've got those left, and of course we have lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of seeds, so don't worry about that. Um, and we've got sunflower seeds. They're planting those right now, too, um, as well. And people are still planting corn. Usually we're done with that by now, but they're still ordering large orders of corn. So they're still doing that because May, honestly, it was too cold. So for especially for some of the some of the uh, more expensive corn varieties like the super sweets, um, that was too cold a ground for those guys to go into. So you still have time to put them in. So get them in. Uh, beans, this is the time of year to start putting your bean seeds in. Get them going. I just had another order this morning for out in Pennsylvania for 100 pounds of bean seeds. So um, they're popular right now. They're going out the door. Um, so, yes, we keep going for a long time in the summer, folks. Um, we have plants for quite a long time. And we have some some of the most beautiful hanging baskets my, I look out the window from the office and I've got this picture window that I can look down in the store and I can see all the hanging baskets hanging up around the store they are so pretty I wish I could hang them all up around my house like that because it's so pretty and I don't want to sell them because they're so pretty they <laughs> bright purple and bright red and pinks and oh my goodness they are lovely out there so um i i've got my eye on one and if it's not sold by the end of the day then i'm gonna take it home with me i think it needs a good home not like i need yet one more thing to water in a pot but hey I I love this time of year it gets me excited about going outside um you know, I like sitting out on my deck and working out on my deck. And I got a bunch of planters out there that I do and some great big things that I can plant some. I got some beans in one and some peppers in another. And it, they're, they're large and they're fun. And the cat usually likes to go outside with me. He's not allowed outside otherwise. But he... Um, 
he is, I think, trying to escape from my house. Um, this is the second floor deck, and I, he's too chicken to jump down between the railing, and I don't, he's too big. I don't think he'd fit through there very well, but I think he was walking along the, uh, uh, the uh, railing along the top the other day, looking down, and I'm, no, oh, good grief. <laughs> so, oh, he's, he's a naughty little bugger, let me tell you. Um, so, yeah, so if you see me fighting with my cat out on my deck, it's I'm not being mean to him. Um, I'm just trying to, you know, prevent him from running off or getting down. I don't know what he'd do if he got outside. I think he'd be scared out of his mind. Um, any kind of noise, anything makes him scared. So, um, yeah, it would be in, it'd be interesting. But then, and no, I don't want to see that. So. Okay, so um, reminder of the week, this is June, and if you have squash, pumpkin, or cucumber plants that you have had vine borers in them, the plant will look fine until like right before you're going to harvest something, and all of a sudden it just dies, and then you look at the plant, and down at the base of the plant, there's a little hole and that looks like a little bug is in there. That's a squash vine borer that is eating out the inside of that plant stem and then everything beyond it dies. Um, right now, the little bug, it's called a crawler, is walking around on your squash and cucumber plants looking where to lay its egg and it lays this little teeny tiny egg. It's like the size of a uh, you put a mark on, of an ink pen on a paper. That's the size of black dot at the bottom of your vine. And that's the egg of the borer. And during the summer, the egg hatches and it goes into the, into the stem and starts to eat out the inside of the stem of your plant. Right now is when the crawlers are laying their eggs. Get out there spray your plants with seven or something to that equivalent um, make sure you've got it on so it lasts if it says spray it every week you're going to have to spray it every week during the month of june um, you want to prevent those vine borers if you've if you've ever had them you don't want them again i don't know where they come from but my goodness those crawlers will all of a sudden be there so let's get out there Get those plants sprayed. Have them some protection on them all month long. Very, very important. Um, after that notice, we need to um, take some time out here to listen to some messages. But we'll be back with the garden show right after that happens. Let's get back to the Jan Musen Garden Show. Call the Master Gardener from DeBrine Seeds in Zealand now at 395-1450. Once again, here's Jan Musen. And we are back. The phone lines are open 616-395-1450. 616-395-1450 is the number to call. Um, I have been noting at my house the insect of the week by far is ants it's been dry they are busy 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 making those little mounds my goodness i think they have decided to edge my driveway there's mounds all the way up that and down my sidewalk um there are so many ants out there right now i'm hoping 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 that the wet weather will kind of get rid of some of those already if you really want really 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 want to get rid of them we do have bug clear um that will help it if it's just the little things in the driveway we've got the taro that you can put in there or home defense that you can spray in those little cracks in the driveway where they're coming up um my goodness it is just i've never seen so many ant hills in my life not that i'm seeing ten thousand ants but there are ant hills everywhere so they are out there I'm actually happy that the one insect I haven't seen are mosquitoes all over the place. So the dry weather, I'm liking that part because <laughs> for some reason they will bite my ankles up <laughs> the whole I, time. 
you know, you think you're covered up, and no, they find the one spot that is not covered up, and that's what they will sting, yes. But, um, yeah, if we do get uh, the water rain this weekend, do remember uh, standing water afterwards is where those mosquitoes, uh, the, the little eggs is, are in those standing water. So let's get the, the um, mosquito dunks or mosquito bits, whatever you're going to use. It's little little pellets of uh bt bacillus thuringiensis um it does not hurt the birds you can drink it it's a soil protein that they have pulled out but it does prevent the mosquito eggs from hatching the bt also does a great job on those little those little worms that get in on your your plants and even the big worms like the tomato hornworm but um this is also the time of the year that if you've got cabbage or one of the coal plants planted you're seeing little white moths flying over them that's what lays eggs on your cabbage that turns into those just disgusting little tiny worms so if you want to prevent that you know, you, all you have to do is for the next month or so, just keep row cover over your cabbages and all those plants. The Then the uh, moths can't lay their eggs on that and you won't get them. Um, after about a month, you don't have to worry about that anymore. But if you want to avoid those little worms that, you know, you think, oh, this looks like a nice, and then all of a sudden, oh, there's there they are burrowing a hole into it um, they get on your broccoli your cabbage um, cauliflower so cover them up with some row cover and we have a caller on the line good morning caller you're on the garden show uh, yes it changes subject not a I problem have a, um, it's supposed to be an all flowering lilac bush mm-hmm. and it's flowers just beautiful and felt beautiful this spring now do i trim that down quite a bit or just where all the blooms were you could just i would just trim off the blooms unless the unless it's gotten so far out of hand and size but i would just trim off the blooms oh okay and then it should bloom again yes right? yes it will bloom again <laughs> next year yes <laughs> oh next year not this summer then um i don't think so um oh because i thought it was supposed to be that uh, oh it, well then get to get those old buds off and hopefully maybe they'll set more blue blooms this year i'm not familiar with that one but um oh, yeah okay yeah trim I those off i bought it that that's what they said so yeah i'll try it yes yes good luck oh how fun i love yeah, lilacs okay. thank you yep. bye mm-hmm. bye oh i love lilacs and to have them all summer that's even better <laughs> I'd rather than than the two weeks you get them in the spring um that's a lovely little thought um you know, I was reading, and I'm. This is an old-fashioned tree that my father loved. This we had um, some catalpa trees in alongside the driveway that went to the barn. Beautiful, beautiful trees. And in the spring, well, first part of summer, it's like the last flowering tree. It has white flowers on it. They are so pretty, and they smell so good. And I was doing some. Um, research for the the seminar I gave last week on pollinators and that is one of the top pollinating trees for for bees I didn't know that and it's kind of fallen out of favor because at the end of the summer it forms these great big long beans they're about a foot to a foot and a half long and people don't like those um when I was growing up, I thought they were great things to play with. We we built things out of them. We did all kinds of fun stuff. But a catalpa tree. So the next time you think I need a large shade tri- type tree, and it's usually kind of a oval shaped. It's a very nice shaped tree. It's got the beautiful flowers in early summer, white flowers that the bees adore. So if you want to, you know you're trying to do a pollinator garden or you're trying to be nice to the pollinators this is something that kind of bridges the spring flowers to the summer flowers um, and it will keep your bees going so it's a tree to remember Um, I thought that was kind of interesting and I was thinking like lilacs and stuff like that they're really not a big fan of those but the catalpa tree flowers they love those so think about that if you're going to put in a tree and I don't even know where you would get a catalpa tree um 
but I can I know there's a maybe on the way to Hudsonville they've got a couple maybe maybe they would have some I don't I'm not sure but it's something to do some research on because it was highly recommended in all the B B things that I read so hey we do have a couple of good trees around here but I I think every old farm had a catalpa tree by it. I swear it did, because when you see these old houses, you know that was a farmhouse at one time, even though it's now su surrounded by a subdivision, because that's got a catalpa tree there. So, and I swear, they all had one back then. And pretty insect-free, It pretty disease-free, so it's kind of a fun tree to think about. Um, I will, one more time about my least favorite rodent of all and it's a chipmunk oh i hate those things the population of chipmunks around my house seems to have exploded now they do a lot of damage um oh gosh i i just hate those things we've got hawks in my neighborhood but they don't seem to be doing their job with the chipmunks i see them running i'm sure they must see them running you need to get your cat out there chasing the chipmunks if it wants to get outside so bad. Maybe that's what he wants to do. Um, my gosh. And if there's any bird seed that falls, like, oh, there's a the little chipmunk running after it. And you're like, ah, oh. the ducks will scare away the chipmunks, thankfully. Um, but the duck is the the chipmunk is not afraid of the little ducklings that come up under my feet or looking for something. He will he just sits up and makes some noise and they all run so uh, i just hate that those chipmunks um we do have a chipmunk trap the little gotcha traps that does one at a time or we have the tunnel trap that you can get more than one at a time um there's usually not just one there's usually a family of them and they seem to have large families from what I can see around my house. So, um, yes, there are ways to get rid of them. There is a have a heart trap if you don't have the heart to kill them. Um, and you can just, you know, have them go in there. But you're going to have to take them and move them over across a river and let them go. Um, otherwise, they're going to be right back within a day. So make sure you go a distance away and cross a river. I don't know, maybe going north and crossing over the river river by uh by the power plant up there uh, it it is not a good they are just not good um they will dig tunnels they can undermine sidewalks and pole buildings and all kinds of fun stuff and if they get in your garage believe me they will chew on everything everything so we need to get rid of those and we do have a caller on the line maybe this person loves chipmunks i don't know good morning caller you're on the garden show good morning Hello. yes yes good morning jan um i planted my beans it'll be just about two weeks my yellow ones are beautiful they're wow they're growing like crazy all of them are coming up and then i planted on the back i, I had two rows and i put the Yellow ones first, and the green ones behind. The green ones aren't doing it very much. They're hit and miss plants. Yeah. And my husband said, "You probably planted those too deep." I said, "The same person planted them." <laughs> I mean, no, you didn't suddenly go doing. two inches down. Yes. Um, no, it's probably because I um, did. You plant a white uh, seeded bean. No, it was pink. Oh, that had color on it so underneath it's white um white seeded beans colored beans um take warmer temperatures than the dark colored beans you do. know what i wondered about that so yeah so what would you just like plant oh just go in there and fill it in and now fill them up yeah okay mm -hmm. that's yeah. what i was going to do today yep that's all what right. i would do yeah the other ones will be a little earlier but that'll all work out oh it will all work out in the end yep. yeah all right thank you jan yep you're welcome yep bye-bye bye -bye. Yeah, I get the same thing. If you plant a dark seeded bean, it will actually germinate in a little colder soil than the the light colored beans. Well, I'm not quite sure why that happens, but when I'm in the germination lab, um, when I'm testing seed germination um, in the fall, I notice that too. That the white beans take, um, the, you got to put them in the little warmer spot in the germinator than the than the uh, dark seeded beans. Just one of those things that 
occurs in life. So um, it's always good to know that so you know what to do with those. Um, we need to stop and take a break. This is news time. Very important to stay. Listen to the news. Uh, there'll be a quiz afterwards. And the show will resume after this. Let's get back to the Jan Musen Garden Show. Call the Master Gardener from DeBrine Seeds in Zealand now at 395-1450. Once again, here's Jan Musen. And we are back, um, ready to rock and roll. We've been talking about why beans didn't come up. Um, black seeded beans will come up quicker and in a warmer or cooler temperature soil than white seeded beans do. Um, that is just a fact of life. Um, and if you did plant in May, it might have been a little bit too cold for them. I mean, the, te the soil temperatures had gotten to 64 degrees, and now it's a little cooler at night. So now it's just kind of staying there. It's not really advancing any higher than that. But all through the month of May, it never got out of 40 degree temperatures for the soil around here. So if something didn't come up, it was too cold. So just go ahead and replant it. It's not a big deal. We've got plenty of time to do most things. Um, some things, if you planted them and they didn't come up, um, you know, and if they're a cool weather crop like broccoli or cauliflower or kale, something like that, you might want to wait until fall now or until mid-August and then you plant them again. Um, for a fall crop. Broccoli, you're going to plant again um, the end of uh, June, I believe, for a fall crop. So that might be the same for cauliflower also. So you plant those the end of June and then you harvest them when it's cooler out in the, in the uh, fall. So don't worry about putting those out as plants right now. I, I wouldn't think so. I would rather do um, uh, plant it for a fall harvest because if the temperatures go above you know 80 degrees or like a normal temperature for this time of year what happens is those things go to seed and they bolt and once they bolt um they are the 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 whole fabric of the of the plant changes and it doesn't taste good anymore so it's basically useless so if you've got uh, broccoli or cauliflower or lettuce or kale that all of a sudden sends out a seed head type thing it's done for pull it out of the ground and um, that's called bolting um, and when that happens it, the the plant's done so we don't want to keep that anymore so that happens when the weather gets um, warm and it's a it is a natural act this is what happens every year to them so just plant them again in the fall and you get when it's cooler temperatures and then they can they can survive again um, the needy plants of the week are still uh, peppers and tomatoes um, blossom end rot is a big thing and it's been hard to keep your garden watered and the the, and the um, blossom end rot is a lack of calcium in the plant um, people add calcium to the soil right now but unless you keep that the the uh, soil water you know about the same don't let it get really wet and then really dry and then really wet and then really dry it is going to that's the kiss of death and you're going to get blossom end rot so you might want to put some mulch around your tomatoes just to keep that water in not have it evaporate out again we have a a day with um 100 sunshine i don't see too many clouds so put water down and it's just going to evaporate so to prevent that from happening let's put some mulch around and, and you might want to put some calcium around and water that in well just so it gets some calcium in the plant so you don't end up with picking a beautiful looking tomato from the top or pepper and then you turn it over and it's got a just a horrible black spot on the bottom and it looks horrible it's still okay to eat you know, cut off the bad looking part and you can eat the top um, but sometimes it takes up so much, you don't get much tomato or pepper left. So let's just get those, get the calcium out there right now. I know there's calcium nitrate that you can put around it. Um, there are some tomato fertilizers that actually have the calcium in it, like tomato tone that a spoma has. Um, 
has the calcium in it, as well as the miracle Grow tomato food has calcium in it. So um, both of those would be a good thing to, if you don't want to just put calcium out there, it would be a good thing to do. Um, there's also a spray that you can spray the tomatoes with. I don't know how well that works, but it's been out there for years, so obviously some people are buying it, and, and it must be helpful. So there is a spray also for the for that. So, um, you know, if your peppers or your tomatoes are looking a little, are looking like they're going to start forming the blossom end right, you can start spraying in them with that. Okay, we're going to talk about drought stress in our lawns right now. Um, it is, uh, it usually changes color. Usually, you can usually see footprints. If someone walks over your yard, you can see footprints in it. Um, and they're kind of turned kind of from green to kind of a dull gray um, or blue-green or even yellow. Um, and people just want to put something on it all the time. During the hot weather, 80-degree weather, we don't want to put anything on the lawn. That just adds more stress to it. But when we have days like today, yes, you can put a weed killer down or you can put um, a fertilizer down. I don't know if I'd put a weed killer down today because there might be rain coming tonight and you really want a good 24 hours without rain. So that might be next week on a cooler day. But you can probably put some fertilizer down. Um, on hot days, if you really, really have to fertilize, I would go at half the rate of a normal fertilizer just because it is stressful for your lawn. Um, and remember to water afterwards. Um, it will help to get the fertilizer in the ground where it needs to be, and it will help get um, the plants off to a good start and not be overstressed. So put the fertilizer down on hot days, half rate, and remember to water it in if you really think you have to water it. Make sure that if you have to mow it, mow it at a higher than normal level, then it will shade out any weeds that are growing up. Uh, the weeds love the hot weather. That's why they're thriving and our grasses aren't. And, and you can drive by those ones, those lawns that it's all yellow except for the green le weeds in the lawn. And that, you know, until we get some normal temperature changes and uh, normal rainfall, that's probably how it's going to be. Um, so, you know, minimize the damage. Don't want mow it too short. Um, make sure it gets some water. Don't be walking on your lawn when it's drought stressed, please. That adds just more problems to it. Also, um, the the leaves, the weeds, the grass actually can break when you walk over it, and then you kill it. So let's not do that. Um, let's make sure we don't do that. Same as in your garden or in your landscape beds. Let's keep keep from walking on it you might want to re-mulch it this time of year to make sure that there's plenty of mulch on it so it doesn't um, evaporate any water that it does get doesn't evaporate immediately um, otherwise you're going to be out there watering but remember don't overwater. water um, sometimes we can do that with our with our landscape beds and our gardens um, stick your finger in the soil if it's wet don't water. If it's dry, it needs some water. That's going to be probably um, your best bet. So make sure you're taking care of it and be really um, observant around your garden and your lawn of what it's going to need during these drought stress times. And hopefully I won't have to talk about this on Tuesday, but we need to stop and take a break. But we will be right back with The Garden Show after we listen to these messages. <music> Let's get back to the Jan Musen Garden Show. Call the Master Gardener from DeBrine Seeds in Zealand now at 395-1450. Once again, here's Jan Musen. And we are back. Um, the phone lines are open, 616-395-1450, 616-395-1450. Uh, we have had an inordinate inordinate amount of people come in buying grass seed uh, this time of year. Really, this is a horrible time of year to try put grass seed down. 
Grass likes spring and fall, of the grasses we have, likes cool weather. We cannot depend on this weather lasting for much longer. So, you know, if you can possibly wait until August 15 to put down your grass seed, that would be best. Unless you're doing a small little, like little patches, you might be able to keep that watered. And people go, well, I can keep it watered. It's not a big deal. I've got underground sprinkling. That underground sprinkling is going to be working almost nonstop during the course of the day because it's got to keep that top eighth inch of soil evenly moist to keep that grass seed evenly moist. You can't get it where the water is standing in puddles on it. That's not good. And you can't have it where it completely dries out. That's not good either. So you got to keep sprinkling. And during the fall, you might have to sprinkle once or twice or maybe three times a day. Um, during weather where it's got nothing but sunshine and no clouds, um, you're going to be probably sprinkling six, seven times a day. Um, and it's going to be hard to keep up with it. And it's not just to do that for a week or two. You're going to be doing that for two to three months. Um, it's it is almost constant. And if you're just thinking you can do this by moving sprinklers, it's almost you know, uh, it's it's a horrible I, it's a horrible thought in my mind. Um, if you have to insist on putting down grass seed this time of year, I would put it down with the um, Scott's uh, Triple Action Fertilizer, which is a starter fertilizer, and it will prevent weeds from grow, growing. Um, that is important. Um, so you got six weeks where you won't have weeds coming up. And believe me, once you start watering the ground, weed seeds will start germinating in there, and they will just take over over this time of year so keep that in mind um, you know it is a lot more expensive than the normal starter fertilizer but it's going to be well worth it um, to keep it weed free for that first six weeks don't think that you can put straw on top of it and you're going to be fine with the watering you're not um, it it doesn't do a good enough job um, and then you got to get rid of the straw afterwards. That's a pain. Um, it just is not a good thought to be putting down grass seed now. I'm just going to give you that. Um, again, and if you desperately have to do it, then okay, that use the fertilizer with the weed preventer in it. Um, if you've got a whole, you know, these people come in and I've, well, I've got a two acre lawn and I'm going to be putting down grass seed now. And no, it does not work. And we do have a caller on the line. Good morning, caller. You're on the garden show. Good morning. Or I should say good afternoon, quickly. <laughs> yes. Uh, so I have a question. Um, we have a Japanese maple, and it looks like it's kind of uh, needing a little bit of nourishment underneath besides giving it water. But we had some uh, dirt around it, and then we put some uh, black mulch. But I would prefer to keep away from the black mulch just because of the bugs and different yeah. things like that. But what kind of soil things are um, would you recommend to put around that just to give it a little bit more? You can see the trunk is looking like it could use a little bit of uh, dirt around it and a, and a good watering. I would just use regular pot topsoil to go around that tree. That would be fine. And I soil only. Yeah, and I would. Okay. I also put tree tone underneath my uh, Japanese maple, and it works What's fine. Tree tone? Yeah. Is tree tone like a um, it's a, spray or is it? it's a granular fertilizer type thing? It's a it's an organic thing. I mean, it's not like it's got a, a lot of nutrients in it, but it's got a lot of mycorrhizae in it. It's got um, the um, uh, what is it called biotone in it? It's got That's all this. I, I, you know, you gave me a good idea with the topsoil, and then tree tone is that it, you said that comes to maybe you just sprinkle that on. Or how yeah, that you. Do, I just sprinkle it on underneath it and water it in. So would I put down the tree tone first in the soil, or would you do a little I bit put of it on, it? I put it on top of the soil. Okay, sounds good. I will try that. And also those little tiny red bugs that are that crawl in your house that are, oh, they're microscopic, they're nano. <laughs> I go around the whole perimeter of the house with that um, defense. Is, is that about the only way we can kind of stop them from crawling all over? Cause I think those are mites, and I don't think the home defense really is not a miticide. 
Um, they're not really insects. They're really arachnoids or something like that. Um, you know what I'm talking about? I wore my socks out the other day. And yeah. I must have stepped on a bunch of them because my yeah. socks were all The spotted. spider mites are out there right now. Um, oh. There is Bear makes um, a three-in-one spray. And I, you don't need the insecticide or the fungicide, but it has a miticide in it. And you might want to spray that around your house. Okay. Because yeah. Because I've seen them all over the place, and it's like when you smash them, they look... And they yeah, make a red stain. Yes. And it's not so it's good. Bear miticide? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you, Jane. And have a great day. Oh, you too. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh, she was talking about her Japanese maple. Mine, I've got a weeping Japanese maple, and I trimmed it this spring, and you know, because it was hanging on the ground, and I trimmed it up, and it kind of bounced up again. It wasn't that heavy anymore, and I mean, I only trimmed it like a month ago, and it is down a good six inches again. That thing has been growing like crazy. Um, healthy little little tree. Um, it's an absolute beautiful tree. But my goodness, to have to trim that tree, it it got it started out as this little teeny tiny thing, and now it's it's like my arm span out there. It's huge. It is so pretty. I love that thing. Okay, well let's stop on that. Um, my poor azaleas, they bloomed. They were so pretty this spring, and after they bloomed, it was like they just looked like they were dead. I've got one purple one that blooms first. And afterwards, it looked horrible. And all of a sudden, all these new little leaves are coming out on it. Now, my pink one just dropped all of its flowers, and it looks dead. So I'm hoping it's going to be like the purple one. I, I did fertilize them both with some holly tone. Hopefully, we'll, we'll get going with that. Okay, I have been told I only have a couple seconds left to talk. So I'm going to remind you I'm going to be here on Tuesday morning at 8 35 45 around in there with dan for the garden party and i will be back again on tuesday at 10 o'clock with gary on talk of the town for the garden hour and i will be back here now that's the most important one i'll be back here next saturday at 11:05 for the garden show and i've got them all right this time it's so hard to remember the names of all of these things, but I will be back here for the garden show next Saturday at 11.05 to answer all your questions. And if you can't get it on the radio, you can give me a call at the store. I'll be at DeBrine's, um, and the number is uh, 616-772-2316. But I will be back here next Saturday, and until then, we're going to go green. You've been listening to the Jan Musin Garden Show on 99.7, 1450 WHTC and WHTC.com. If you wish to hear this or other programs hosted by the Master Gardener from DeBrine Seeds in Zealand, check out the podcast section of our website, WHTC.com, and listen or download for free. The Jan Musin Garden Show is a presentation of 99.7 and 1450 WHTC.